Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Not Too Complicated 2. How are you guys doing today? How's life? In between the episodes I have been very busy. Unfortunately the things that I have been busy with are not very visible. So I am just going to give you a very small update. We had just over 100,000 MOX 241 nuclear fuel. We have burned through all of that and now we're processing LECM 243. I used to think that if the reactor runs out of fuel and before you can pump in the new fuel, maybe there's going to be an explosion. Thankfully that didn't happen. Also as a result, we have already 9000 of the depleted version. The reason that I went with 100,000 is that every time that you want to upgrade from one tier of fuel to the next tier, you're going to lose around 40%. Uh, we need to advance two tiers of fuel, it's not 80%, I just want it to be safe. We do have extra flowers, we have extra 5000 ultimate conglomerate, and I also crafted a bunch of other stuff that we need in order to make the mark 3 collector and relay. Oh, and the most important achievement that I did is that if you guys remember in my hotbar there used to be a ton of ingots. And now you might notice they're gone. Those were the ingots that we needed in order to make the ultimate ingot and well, now we have it on auto crafting. Uh, the only issue is that I can only craft one or maybe like 10 because we are missing a bunch of items. Well, so far so good. But I know for a fact that we are missing these elements. So let us get them. Some of them were slightly unbelievable. I never knew that we don't have zirconium. I mean, we have most of the elements, but just for argument's sake, if we want to order 1000 ultimate ingots, then we are going to have some problems. So zirconium is easy. We just need gold inside the fission chamber. That gives us zirconium and yttrium. And we need them both. You know how to make gold. Okay, you don't. There's like 29 pages and the actual gold is going to be, I don't know, here, 27th. You would expect they would put this on the first tab. So zirconium is gone, yttrium is gone. I just wanted to make a confession that I was never a fan of chemistry. Uh, germanium comes from blaze powder, which while we are here, let us order 1 million more blaze powder, just in case. It also comes from netherwort, but I'm not sure. Uh, we use the blaze powder. So you're off the list. Fluorine and neon come from potassium. So these are also off the list. Chromium and vanadium come from emerald. So they're also off the list. I always used to think we have titanium. Okay, maybe I never set a pattern for it. And whatever the hell this is, comes from polonium. So we are left with two. Neptunium, which I don't think it's going to come from Neptunium ingots from aquaculture, so we have to craft it, as well as americium. I'm sure that we already had a pattern for these guys, but I just removed them because uh, we expanded our base. But in any case, Neptunium is just hydrogen plus uranium. Yeah, you see, we have 400 of it left. And americium is lithium. Uh, plus uranium, obviously. The question is, uh, who's doing what? Ah, your uranium. And here are the patterns. Now we're done. So now in theory, if I want to order 1000 ultimate ingots, yes, we should be able to craft it. But I don't really think we need 1000, let's start with 100. Wait a minute, the previous crafting job was not finished. Okay, so this is something that I had to do a very long time ago and I knew I had to do that, but I was just lazy to do it. The thing is, if you guys remember, the way that we are operating the fission and fusion reactors is through ender chests. Basically what we have is that we have a few interfaces down here with the recipes, they go into an ender chest, and then using a very weird filtering system which I really tried hard not to mess up, we're pumping it into the fusion reactors. And you know, also the fusion reactors, but they're not very complicated. Even though I tried my best, I messed up one of the fusion reactors. This one. We have silver on one side, and for some reason we also have it on the other side. I think there is a reason for it, it's just that I don't really remember why I did that. Anyways, ender chests are not very smart, so if the item is available in the ender chest, it will be pumped in into the fusion reactor, and elements that we don't want them to mix will be mixed. Or even sometimes they don't get mixed, for example, you cannot mix silver with uranium. I should be able to fix the filtering issue, but the problem is I noticed that our production of ultimate ingots is incredibly slow because we don't have enough reactors. Therefore, you know, we have more reactors now. And this time there's going to be a difference. We are not going to use ender chests anymore, we're going to use interfaces. I'm hoping that interfaces are going to be smart. On top of this platform we have a total of 10 reactors, therefore we're going to have 10 interfaces. I don't want to use crazy wiring, so we're just going to have entangled blocks. And now that I'm thinking about it, uh, these entangled blocks could have been there as well. It's okay, we all make stupid mistakes. Also it's very dark, <laughs> let's light it up. Very good, everything is now entangled. Obviously all of them are also going to require power, so there you go. 
and since they're not very smart, we also need to extract. Again, this is something that I have not tested, so I'm not really sure if an interface is going to work. But we will see. Uh, which one is fusion? Uh, yeah, these ones should be fission, because one oxygen gives you two beryllium. Uh, this one should be fusion. Let's take some. We move them to the new interface, and this should be the easiest fix. And let us give it a test. Uh, this one is holmium. Can I order 1000 of it? Oh no, it's a complex one. Maybe terbium? Yeah, this is less complex. Please tell me you work. Oh, it's making the phosphorus first, and then it stops working. Do you really have to insert from the sides? <laughs> Why do you have to be a jerk? Because this is not really good, I will run into the same problem. So it does work with fission, it doesn't work with fusion. Because I guess you have to insert it from the sides. Okay, then I guess see you in one hour, after I fix all of my patterns. Actually, the fix is not as difficult as you might think. It's still going to be very difficult because I have to set all the filters again, but hear me out. It's just that we need to remove everything that we have made. I wish there was an easier method of unentangling, but we should not complain about this mod. This is a great mod. So this is more or less the same system that we have with the ender chests, but with one difference. And no, that difference is not a barrel. We have an interface, we have a barrel, we have an entangled block. Whenever we want to craft something, everything is going to go inside the barrels. The way that I'm making different elements for the ultimate ingot is relatively easy. What I do is that whatever has a recipe that we can break down something inside the chemical dissolvers, well, I just use that recipe. For some of the elements, I'm using the fusion reactor because, for example, we can put uranium and get palladium. But for the ones that I have to fuse, I use this method. For example, I will find tin. Tin is number 50, antimony is number 51. So what I do is that I take tin, I break it down into the, you know, vials, I add one hydrogen. For tellurium, I add helium. For cesium, I have to add five, and I don't really remember what was five. <laughs> yeah, boron. So I add boron. Therefore, what I'm doing is that I take tin, I add molecules to it until we reach osmium. Then I use osmium, I add molecules until we reach lead. Then we do lead, uranium, and then we're done. So if you look at these nine patterns up here, all of them are using tin. Therefore, we just put them in one interface. On one side of the pipes, we are going to say extract tin, and on the other side, we're going to blacklist tin. So now if I order terbium, it should work. It's really not gonna work, you know why? It doesn't have power. Did I crash? No. And also we need to extract it into our system. But now it should work. Yes, it is. At uh, the moment I arrived, it finished, but we have exactly 100, so that works. So now what we have to do is to sort everything based on the main element that we're using to add molecules. For example, this one is lead. You see, I was already very careful. Uh, one interface was for tin, one was for lead, one was for uranium, but you know, stupid stuff happens. And unfortunately, it happened a lot with uranium, because you might notice, after uranium, we have literally nothing which has an EMC. So yeah, in short, we needed way more reactors and, well, we had to do this anyways. So again, for lead, one side is whitelisted and on one side, it's blacklisted. And now if I order, I don't know, bismuth, it should work? Uh, I don't know, 1000, who cares? Stop rotating, <laughs> jerk. Yep, yeah, now it's fine. You can't really see that. Are we getting bismuth? Yes. Okay. I have to do it for the rest. Oh, and by the way, I found the culprit. Plutonium. It takes two silver, and this is why we had a mess up. Then I guess we don't take it. You stay there. Uh, <laughs> that was a ton of work, but I think I'm done. Finally. Previously, when we wanted to craft something, sometimes we even had more than nine recipes per fusion reactor. Now that we have more fusion reactors, and I have paid attention to the filtering, each interface actually holds like six items, and that's it. So crafting should be at least 33% faster. Because you know, each fusion reactor has less job to do. Also, there are a few elements which we constantly need, for example, the fuel that we need for the reactor, and those guys, which one of them is Californium, has its own fusion reactor. So it can work constantly, and it's never going to affect our other crafting jobs. Anyhow, that's just a ton of garbage, unless it works. Can you craft me 1000 ultimate ingots? You should. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, actually, one thing that I forgot is that now that we have more reactors working, uh, power is an issue. I have crafted 10 more ultimate induction cells, let's use them. 41 trillion RF in reserve. And just in case, how are we doing on every... Wow. <laughs> so many stupid stuff working. And you see what I'm talking about, we need 350,000 uranium. 
Previously, that used to be handled by like two fusion reactors and that's it. You know, I canceled the crafting job because I noticed something. We want these guys to craft. What happened? Huh, that was weird. Then I'm going to do this manually. I was going to say that we're going to need more powerful CPUs so that they can do more jobs. Why did this happen? I don't get it. Uh, whatever you're doing, don't do it. And voila. Just before we forget, you were making me 57 of these. I was also making some eternal crystals. And you make me 1000 ultimate ingots. It's not going to be a great difference, but there should be a difference. There seems to be a difference. But again, this is going to take a tremendous amount of time because it's 1000 ultimate ingots. Our power jumped from 11 million to 13 million. Uh, that jump of a 2 million I think means that like 50 machines are working at the same time. That is what we call success. Uh, so far it's been crafted, but I have a problem with the alchemistry mod. If I can somehow find it, uh, there are so many stuff. Ah yes, finally. Krypton. Uh, you might notice that we are crafting 14,000 of it, but if you look at my applied energistic system, we have 33,000 of it left. Does that with every single item, and I have no idea why. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to mention, no, it's not a byproduct, we're actually getting Krypton in order to make Argon, which is going to be mixed with some other elements. So it's not just a byproduct, uh, we get it and then we consume it. It has been a while later, and I just wanted to show you, all 10 reactors are working. And I'm assuming most of the reactors here are also working? Yeah, except the one. Anyhow, while the ultimate ingot is being prepared, let us move on to other stuff. I do AFK a lot in between cutscenes, but it's not just I'm standing here and looking at the wall. I do try to craft as many items as I can. For example, I ordered 25,000 end crystals, 10,000 eternal crystals, a ton of nuclear fuel. I know it stopped because it's crafting the ultimate ingot. A ton of zombie heads, ender stars, more ender stars apparently. <laughs> ah no, well, one of them is the enhanced ender ingot. But we do have other things to do and we are running out of basalt. I removed the igneous extruder, I have to reinstall it. So what we need to do is that we need to start expanding our base. It's not going to be a huge expansion, but we need space for a few machines. What we are going to work on next is going to be the eternal crystals. These guys. I keep forgetting why the hell do we need them. Well, yes, they do have a singularity, but we consume them a lot. Ah, yes, energy condenser mark 2, which has a singularity, but no. Ah, yes, I finally found it. And the resonator which we need quite a bit in order to make an antimatter relay. Recipes are so complicated that I even forget why the hell do we need stuff. But essentially what we are going to do is that we are going to have four combination crafters in order to make eternal crystals. You know, kind of like those towers that we have over there, but way smaller. I just entangled the cores, we can cover them. We could have covered them, it's just like two layers. <laughs> so eternal crystals are going to need three ingredients. Crystal shards, ender shards, and end crystals. We're going to use this ender chest for crystals, like so the other ender chest for the ender shards. And obviously we also need to put the end crystals, so here is another ender chest. So now, how do we want to do this? I need to find an empty channel somewhere. You seem to be empty. Yeah, it's only 20. Okay, we can use this one. What we are going to do is not very complicated. We're just going to have an interface here, and we want it to export three ingredients, uh, ender shard, ender crystals, and end crystals themselves. And probably a crafting card? I always forget, uh, you need to take one stack, not just the one. So crystals and the ender shard. So these are the ingredients. We are going to have three connections for the three different ingredients, like so. And I don't think it really matters, but each one can go inside an ender chest and you go into the center one. Yes. So now if we extract them, we should be fine. Yes. And let us also not make the same mistake that we did with the Opinium cores, uh, we are going to set filters. We are blacklisting end crystals. Uh, am I doing this wrong? No, not really. Yes, this is a mess, but you're still not crafting it. <laughs> okay, you know why it's not working? Uh, I just figured it out. Uh, we put particles on, and yeah, it does work. It just works so fast that I couldn't see it. I'm guessing we don't need to craft it anymore. Yep. Oh my goodness, you're still crafting the ultimate ingot. So I did this, but now I'm thinking, uh, not that I've checked the recipes for the eternal star, um, 4 is garbage. So by eternal star, I meant eternal crystal. Um, maybe we should have at least 8 of them. Because you know, this is the rate that we're getting it, and I think each machine is going to make us 1 per second, so we need hundreds of thousands of these. The question is how do we do this without messing it up? Um, I'm assuming we can just bring up the pipes, disconnect them, and then put the pedestals, yes. 
Oh, and by the way, did I mention that we're going to have two more on each side? I lied. We go with four more on each side. And yes, we are tripling our production. Just checking if I have messed up any filters and no, we seem to be fine. So we can just finish the piping and make sure nobody's connected. Very good. I also have a feeling that we are going to need much more pedestals. We are doing fine. Yes, yes. We're missing five. Okay. Nobody is connected. Everybody should be working fine. Yeah. So how fast are we getting eternal crystals? Uh, still garbage. So now the bottom ones don't work. Okay, now it's working. There seems to have been a mess up. I just have to remove everything from the pedestals and then we should be okay. Oh, awesome. With you, nobody works. <laughs> We had the same issue, I removed everything from the pedestals and now we are fine. Yep. So what is the speed? It's not great, but it's much more decent. Also, you should remember that I can't really go faster than this because my production of shards is not that fast. Yeah, you see, we're losing them. And after we lose them, it's not even going to be this fast. We have just made this, but unfortunately I have to turn it off. Just for a while. Uh, do you know why? Because here is the point. I need a few million of ender shards and ender crystals. And if I consume all of them, then making the seeds is going to be incredibly difficult. So my solution is we first make all the seeds that we're ever going to need, for example, 300,000 more. And then we're going to start activating it again. Basically, every time that I'm making a seed, I'm doubling these guys. And if I don't have enough of them, doubling them is going to be a problem. Uh, also, just as a very small update, we're still making the ultimate ingots. But it's very natural. I ordered 1000 ultimate ingots and we need 16,000 of each and every element. And for some items, we even need them more, like sodium and so on and so forth. And I think uranium was almost 400,000? I just had a very small epiphany. Um, in order to get these shards much faster, we have an easy method. We're going to need an export bus, a capacity card, a few speed upgrades, and you know, obviously a few cables. We have 16 enriching factories which are idle, and we only have 4 enriching factories which are making us the shards. That is a horrible misallocation of resources. Which one of you is the enrichment chamber? You are. Capacity card, both items go in, and acceleration cards. Nice. Oh, that's the wrong one. Nope. Yes, what we want to export are the seeds, uh, not the shards. This is a much better allocation of resources. They're being filled in. It doesn't really matter which one goes in first, but you might notice a huge difference now. These were both more or less in the same number, but now we have double the ender shards. In literally just a minute. We wait until the last one is full. Yep. This is a much nicer speed. Much nicer. Every time that I AFK, I try to keep most of the CPUs busy. You know, we make the ender resonator and so on and so forth. One thing that I just realized we needed in tens of thousands is diamond furnaces. It's expensive, but let's order 20,000. Also blocks of quartz. One million more. We have 1.7 million, but you know. So I have been waiting for my ultimate ingot to get ready and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, it's not going to happen this episode, it's going to happen eventually. The thing is, it just crafted 14,000 indium, right? It crafted more, but you know. If you look at my applied energistic system, I already have 46,000 indium. It does that with so many items and I have no idea why. I don't know, for some reason it refuses to craft stuff, but in any case, I also made a facade for this room. It's not great, but I had nothing to do. I was bored. So to finish today's episode, we are going to do something else. You guys have been telling me in the comments that yes, the stars are quests, and if I get the final star shard, I'm going to get three more. The thing is, we kind of cheated by making these things and we use applied energistics or, you know, the singularities method for this one. I mean this recipe. So now we need to craft them, one by one. This is something that we are going to use later on, so let us have 10,000 of these. Are you a quest? No, we have already done that. Ah, we haven't done this one. So wait a minute, you should also count. Yes. And you should also count. Is there something in between? Yeah, there should be an orb in the middle. Uh, let's get three more of these. Yeah, the sphere. So this quest line is done. We get four more. That's kind of garbage, but thank you. Oh, now I need to make magnum stars. That's fun. Oh, magnum star also has a singularity. Uh, this one is cheap, but you know, I just noticed. For the rest, I'm incredibly lazy. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to make patterns. I don't really like these kind of quests. <laughs> They're such a waste. So here is Magnum Star 1, Magnum Star 2, Magnum Star 3, 4, and the orb. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it takes time. Okay, thank you, thank you. So now all we need to do is to get the Omega. Oh, we need the... Uh... Oh, this is a <laughs> pain. 
Actually, it's not a pain. The value should be equal to Colossal Star Omega. So I guess let's put it in. That's too much. That's too much. I think you should stop. So Colossal Star 2, because I forgot the 1. Then 3 takes a bit of time, but 4, you should be able to craft the sphere. Uh, also give me a Colossal Star Omega. And the values were not the same. I made a boo-boo. Yes, thank you. And I guess if we get you, yeah, we have three more. If I'm not wrong, we need 22 more final star shards in order to make the final flower. I don't have that many ultimate ingots. It's still being prepared. But we can have nine more blocks. And we have 47 quadrillion EMC. So let's see how many we can make. It does seem we can craft quite a bit. Here is one more inventory. Another inventory. And this should be the final one. Actually, uh, just a bit more. We're out. So how many can we make? Uh, nine? Nice. Theoretically speaking, we can make nine more if we had the ultimate ingots. So that's 18. We have four. 22. We need four more. That's not much. Next episode, we're going to have it. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye. So I just noticed something, I'm still crafting a bunch of items and I don't really want to cancel it. You know, especially the ultimate ingots, so I think what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna AFK until it finishes. I don't really know why I thought that's important, but it's okay. Bye bye.